All right. Let's get started. All right. Let's start off. My name is Joseph Walker. Uh, this presentation is for LTEC 4121, Section 020. Uh, yeah, my graduation is 2016. And what my presentation is about is piano playing for, for rookies or beginners, whatever you want to call them. I'll just give you a little background about myself. I've been playing piano since I was young, about eight years old. <clears throat> I was, it was awful when I was homeschooled. Uh, I took lessons all the way up to about uh, 12 or 14. Ever since then, I've been relatively self-taught, uh, teaching at my own pace. It's one of those things where once you learn it, you kind of never forget. Uh, back when I was young, I used to perform recitals and other things. Uh, a variety of music, of piano music varies. Uh, one thing I like is classical. Uh, other things I like is theme music from popular companies like Disney, uh, Nintendo, other theme music. Uh, I'm right around it. <coughs> A lot of people ask why piano. Uh, it's a good way to build memory and uh, hand eye coordination, and a lot of people find it as a way of uh, meditation. So that's one reason I do it. And a lot of people don't know that learning an instrument could build future business opportunities. So maybe this presentation will help you figure out some opportunities uh, you might want to find. All right, let's go ahead and get started with the basics. First thing you need to know is the labels of the keys. See, the keys, they follow the way of the alphabet. So they start from A right here, all the way up to G. I mean, these are the only keys that I found on the piano. And there's these keys I'll explain later they're called sharps and flats, but I'll get into that in another slide later. So the main thing you need to know is the labels of the keys, which is A to G. keys are, you need to know that the numbers right found on the left panel right here are linked to your finger. So every number, I mean, every finger has a number. For the thumb, it's, it's considered one. So when you see one under a note on the sheet music, it means play that note with your thumb. And so on, two, three, four, and five. So like on the right, Panel right here, this gives you an example. So if you see this note, the first note on there has a one under it. That means you play that first note with your thumb. So that gives you an idea of what uh, the numbers mean when you come to sheet music in the future. So that's the numbers of the fingers, and then there's types of notes. Now, there's more types of notes than these, but this is just for beginners. See, there's a whole note <coughs> in which you hold one note down for four beats. And then there's a half note, which is a note, but it's a kind of empty around the circle. You hold it for two beats. There's a quarter note, in which you hold the beat for one beat, and there's an eighth note, in which you hold it for half a beat. On the other side of the slide, you see uh, the different types of rest. A rest is essentially just the exact opposite of what a note is. You don't play anything during a rest. So, <clears throat> On the first part right here, you'll see a rest under the line is a whole rest. That means you don't play nothing for four whole beats. And the easy way to recognize this is if you have a rest that's four whole beats, there'll probably be no other notes around it since it takes four whole beats. And once you see that, you don't play nothing for four whole beats. A half rest is the exact opposite. It's on the top of the line. It's just two beats. And usually, you see a half rest, it usually has one or two notes surrounding the half rest. The sign right here comes as like a hand sign, it's a quarter, you know, quarter rest, one beat, you leave the sign. And the note down here is a eighth rest, it means you don't play anything for an eighth of a beat. Now to get started on the right hand, which is the treble clef, see the treble clef is line right here. This is what a trumpet clef is. Usually the trumpet clef is played by the right hand, but for beginners it's always played by the right hand, so that's what we're going to go off of. 
So the treble clef is uh, for the right hand. That's showing you that whatever notes pop up on this right here, that's for the right hand. The next thing you see is right here is two numbers. Usually it's a four and four for beginners. This is a time signature. Time signature, the top one means uh, how many beats per measure. So it's four beats in just one whole bar. I'll show you what a measure is in a second, but it's four beats in one whole bar. And the bottom note, and the bottom number means how many, what the value of each beat is, which you won't need to uh, know for a while, but I'm just giving you an example of what that means. The numbers on here is linked to the numbers correlating to your fingers, so it's just the number line, one, two, three, four, five. Um, and I'll show you exactly what that means after this. So this is what a measure is, it's separated by, separated by a bar line. Like I said, there's four beats per measure, so you see in the first measure, there's two quarter notes, which is two beats, and one beat a piece, and then there's a half note, which is two beats. So that equals four beats per measure. So yeah, the second one is the same thing. And the third one is two half notes, and the fourth one is a whole whole one. So I'll give you an example exactly how it sounds. So in the first one, it sounds just like one, sounds like one, two, three, four. The second measure is one, two, three, four. Third one is two half notes, is one, two, three, four. The third one, you hold the same note down for four beats, which is one, two, three, four. So that's just an example of how uh, you know beats are played in a measure. So I'm going to the next slide. <clears throat> so what I use to memorize notes is acronyms. You see the first acronym here is every good boy does fine. This is for the right hand. So for every note on the line, this is for the line notes only. So every note on the line is either E, G, D, D, or F. And you can use this acronym to recognize when you're looking at sheet music to which, uh, which note is which. So the first line, the first uh, line is an E. If you remember this acronym, as you can always remember, it's every good boy does fine. So the second line is a G. The third line is a B, and so on and so on. Fourth line is a D. Fifth line is, a, uh, is an F. So if you remember that acronym, you can always recognize what notes land on which line. For the space notes, you notice that on the, the first acronym, it skips one uh, letter in the alphabet each time. So it goes from E to G, G to B, D to, uh, B to D, and D to F. And if you have to know the common alphabet, you know that in between E and G is F, in between G and B, and in piano terms is A. So from A, B, C, D, you know how it goes up. So for space notes, notes specifically in the space, you use I use a different uh, acronym, which is FACE, F-A-C-E. It's FACE for space, that's how I remember it. Uh, line for fine, a FACE for space, that's how I remember it personally, but it's up to you to remember how to uh, you know, remember these notes on your own chord. So I, for space notes, I use this simple acronym right here, F-A-C-E, and I just match them up from these notes up here to the keyboard down here. So the first note is E for every, you play this note. If you go up one, you go up one on the uh, on the measure, you go up one on the keyboard. So E goes from E to F, F to G, G to A, A to B, so on and so on. And now that we got the right hand down, we can go to the bass clip, which is mainly used for the left hand. Um, same thing as a time signature form for uh, bass clef is often called an F clef, and there's the line numbers right here. Same thing for the right hand for the left hand. So, <clears throat> so with the bass clef is two is a different acronym to remember these notes. <clears throat> fact, my favorite acronym is all cows eat grass. That's how I remember the space notes. So. For space notes, it's all cows eat grass, that's how I remember them. But for 
for line nodes, this is this acronym right here. Good boy does find all of it. So it's G, B, D, F, A. So every note falling on the line will be either G, B, D, F, or A. And for the other one, it's A, C, E, G, all paths E grass. You can come up with your own acronym if you want to, but personally, that's my favorite. I remember that same acronym for about 14 years, and I still use it to this day to read notes. Now, I'm going to pass out this uh, activity sheet to show you just fill this out and you can fill in the lines. And I'm going to pass out the Note 
you will reply by. That's really a nice one. Now, sharps and flats uh, is a little more complicated too. See, when you have sharps and flats, these are these black keys right here. So, <clears throat> you see something on the piano. This is, this is the sign for a sharp right here. It's a numeric sign. And for a flat, it's more like a lowercase b. So when you play uh, anything like this, like I'll give you an example. So, it says a C, I play a common C, but when I play a C sharp, you go up half a note. That's what they call it, you go up half a note. So I play a C, and then in order to play a C sharp, if you see a C, you see a C sharp, you go up half a note. Because it's also a D flat. You see a D, we play D. But if you see a D with the small B right here, you go down half a note. So sharps and flats are uh, a little complicated, but that's something you run into commonly. Uh, there's also a thing called uh, uh, time, I mean, not a time signature. Is a sharp signature. It's when the front we go into the time signature. When you spot a sharp right here in front and behind the time signature, it's always that note will always be sharp. So let me go to the other side of the slide. And there's a sharp right here on any one of these lines behind the time signature, that means that the uh, that note is always sharp throughout the song, unless there's another complicated thing, but I'm just going to keep it simple just for the basis of this uh, presentation. But <clears throat> when you see a sharp or a flat behind the time signature, that means that the sharp, that note is always sharp throughout the song. Same thing with a flat. So you see a flat, no matter how many flats there are, you can play, uh, you play note flat throughout the whole song. So, give me an example of that. Now, that's just for the basics of piano playing. Um, give me questions. What are the white keys and the black keys? Why are they, uh, what are they made out of? Uh, plastic, pretty sure. Um, that depends on what piano. Cause I got a keyboard. I was using an example as a keyboard. Uh, my keyboard is made out of plastic, but when it comes to regular pianos, such as grand pianos, I'm pretty sure they're made out of wood or wood or marble. I'm not exactly sure. This is the different. It depends on what company makes them. Anything else? Conclusion of my video. You play Beethoven's Sixth Symphony?